Backrooms level 5 is a very famous level. I've gone over it, so have other people, and I've also gone over a ton of its sub-levels. But in this video, I'm gonna be going over possibly the most famous sub-level in all of the backrooms. Level 5.1, the Terror Hotel Casino. This is an amazing sub-level. It's horrifying, it's gut-wrenching, it's liminal, all the good things that a backrooms level is. Without any more talking, without any more ado, let's get into the video, shall we? Backrooms level 5.1 is classified as a class casino and is safe, secure, and is just good, clean fun. Just a heads up, it's, it's not at all. You shouldn't trust that. Level 5.1 takes the appearance of a massive casino deep within level 5's complex. It's owned by Entity 18, and of course, Entity 18 is the beast of level 5. If you're not aware of who that is, essentially, the entity is a very powerful, enigmatic creature that seems to have control over level 5 and its domains. It has a squid-like head on a humanoid body and is usually seen with a suit on. Pretty dapper fellow. Anyways, the beast of level 5 runs this casino. Level 5.1 is accessed through the Beverly Room in level 5, which is this massive ballroom with a table in the middle. So when you get to that room, you can walk around and you'll know you're going to see it because of its grand entrance. Level 5.1's opening looks like a large Vegas-style casino with doors and lights and neon signs on the outside. The front sign has the letters TH on the front of it, and of course that means Terror Hotel. The hours of operation are listed on the front doors, and it's open for 16 hours and closed for 8. Which is pretty interesting, I gotta say, <laughs> who's working a 16 hour shift? You'll kind of feel drawn into the casino when you get near the entrance. It's almost like an addiction. And when you walk into the casino, you will see a ton of different things. You'll see roulette tables, you'll see cards, you'll see dice, you'll see slot machines and pool tables, and literally anything else that's in a real life casino. It's all here. Now, obviously, the backrooms doesn't have the standard currency like the US dollar or the euro or anything like that. So in order for these games to work, you're going to need to know a few things. The games in level 5.1 run off of a coin like object that almost looks like a poker chip. You can get some of these chips by bartering with the staff that is on duty inside the casino. You can trade things like almond water or royal rations and stuff to get more of the chips. And the more of the chips you have, the more games you can play. Each chip has a different value depending on their color, and in the casino, red chips are worth $1 of gameplay, blue chips are worth $5 of gameplay, yellow chips are worth $10, and green are 20. And each different game will only work based off a certain amount of money. For example, simple games like slot machines and stuff like that will only cost one red chip. But other games that have higher stakes, like dice or roulette, will require higher value chips, like a yellow or a blue. It's been rumored that there's actually chips that exist worth $50, but no proof of that has been found, and the rumor comes from a story. It's a story about a man who was able to trade something for a purple colored chip. The chip had a number in the very middle of it, and each time this man played a game, that number would go up or down if he won or lost. At first, he was winning games and the number was going up, and then he hit a very unlucky losing streak and the number would go down, eventually hitting zero, and what happens in the next part of the story isn't known. But the man was never seen again, and no one's ever heard of him again. So, who knows? There's theories I'll talk about later, though. While exploring this casino, you'll be able to hear the sounds of the other guests playing the machines. The calm ambience of music, the carpeted floors underneath you, and the entire place is this weird liminal space thing because it feels so much like a casino from real life, but it also is uncanny in a way because you know you're not in real life. If you've ever seen the Percy Jackson movie from the early 2000s when they went into the casino, that is how level 5.1 feels. It's like a break from the horror of the back rooms, but it's actually not a break at all. It's still very scary. The chips here also act as a sort of reward or currency for winning games. If you play a game that costs one blue chip and you win six red chips, the six red chips will be dispensed from the machine and you'll have one more chip to use. That's how the game works. If you ever want to leave the casino and get out of the level back to level five, you're gonna have to trade your chips in for various prizes and objects. 
You can trade for memory jars and babble balm and maiden's ink and almond water and royal rations and many objects that are backrooms related and many other things like shoes and t-shirts and stuff like that. Doing this acts as like your payment for paying the casino. The casino itself is actually relatively average in every aspect. Like I mentioned earlier, there are lights and there are games and there's the constant blaring of noises, there's cheering and laughing and screaming from other people who have won, and all of this will give you that feeling that you want and need to play the games here. You'll get more and more drawn into it the longer you're stuck here. The aroma of alcohol is present throughout the entire casino, and the entire vibe is entrancing, and it just gets you more and more addicted to playing. What really sets the casino apart from real-life casinos is the nature of the games inside. Wanderers who have been in and have played these games say that they're rigged for you to win or to lose, and they're perfectly engineered to let people win just enough so you keep playing, but also lose enough to where the casino makes a profit still. Some even say the machines will malfunction so you lose your turn if you win. These are just rumors though, they're probably not true. Wink wink. Aside from the games and the gaming area, the casino has other places, like a bar and a pool room and that kind of thing and those sorts of things. The bar has a massive food and drink menu, and it is run by an entity known as the Barkeep. Any food and drink that is served here is not name brand real life. They seem to only be available in level 5.1. The drinks have been described as very strong and very pleasant, and the food is also supposed to be amazing. It ranges from simple bar dishes like mac and cheese and onion rings, up to things like filet mignon and steaks and stuff. It's all supposed to be the best thing you've ever eaten, and in order to get this stuff, you have to use the chips you won. Now, running this casino is a unique array of staff members that are all very strange and unique, and this is when it starts to get kind of scary. Obviously, there's the barkeep, who runs the bar and the food part of the level. He's known to be kind to wanderers, not overtly aggressive. He's conversational and likes to get to know patrons. He's not a human, he's some sort of amalgamation of human parts and casino parts. And as a matter of fact, all staff members here seem to be that way. They kind of look malformed and misconstrued accidents. You'll see what I mean in a second. The manager appears to be a former researcher from the backrooms named Louis. Louis is very ingrained in the Terror Hotel lore because he was the first person there at its opening. Now, Louis is not Louis anymore, and he seems to have been amalgamated and transformed to have pool sticks as his arms and his eyes made out of billiard balls. Louis has no recollection of his former life as a research assistant and explorer, and now he lives his days managing this casino as some horrifically twisted version of himself, with grotesquely shoved in pool sticks where his arms used to be and billiard balls shoved into his eye sockets. Any attempts to interview Louis result in nothing, because he usually gets confused and goes back to playing games. There's other staff, like Billy. Billy is a humanoid casino piece, with a body of a billiard ball and legs of pool sticks. He's usually passive as well. These entities are very misunderstood, no one really knows anything about them, and because of this, no risky behavior should be tried when encountering them. And of course, the Beast of Level 5 runs and operates the casino. He's been known to gamble and to challenge some winners of games and wager huge riches if that person wins. And if they lose, they have to become a member of the casino staff. Losing, of course, means you'll be mangled and twisted into these weird casino shapes. Like Louie had the pool stick shoved into his arms where they used to be and their arms are cut off and his eyes are taken out and billiard balls are shoved in. So if you lose the game with the beast, you get turned into something like that. And as you can expect, no one ever wins. It's unknown if the Beast Level 5 uses the casino just for getting more victims and torturing them into this misfigured shapes, or if he's just a genuine businessman. We can guess it's to get more victims though. There are no communities or outposts here, of course, and to enter, you have to find the casino doors in the Beverly Room of Level 5 to walk in. This level is just a horrifying trap. If you think about it, it's like a welcomed paradise to some people, because on one hand, you can have fun and play cool games and get food and hang out with people, but on the other hand, you could get stuck in an infinite cycle of playing games forever while you slowly decay, eventually challenging the beast of level 5 just to escape, losing the challenge, and then facing a life of heinous bodily harm because you've been mangled and tortured into something that's a human casino entity. 
You just have to keep your wits about you and stay vigilant in order to survive the casino. And never under any circumstance stay for too long or ever talk to the beast level 5. You'll never be able to leave if you do. That's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the sublevel series, make sure you drop a like. I love this sublevel. It's got that underlying horror aspect that's really creepy, but also like the liminal vibe. It's great. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. And if you want more videos like this, check me out. I, I upload three to four times a week. You can subscribe. It's free. You can leave a like. It's free. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much for all you do. Make sure to tell somebody you love them. And without further ado, I'm going to end off the video here. Peace and love.